Well, hey, hey there, happy innovators. How are y'all doing? Long time no podcast, but here we are. Like I promised, episode number 100 of the Singularity Podcast. And let me tell you, when I started this podcast back in 2017, uh, if you would have told me that the Singularity Podcast would get you know up to 100 episodes, oh, I would have been so happy to hear that because when I started out, I really had no idea, you know, what the future was going to be for the Singularity Podcast. Like, would I be able to continue doing it? Would there even be a reason to do it? You know, for the next three years, and it took me, you know, about three years to get to episode 100. But um, I'm proud of the fact that this podcast has gone this long. And uh, even though the audience is relatively small, you know, it has grown over the years. But, you know, it is compared to other podcasts that are out there. It's relatively small, uh, the audience is. And um, I'm fine with that. You know, of course, I would always welcome, you know, more viewers and, you know, more listeners and that kind of thing. But uh, I am happy overall with how things have gone so far. And I'm happy with what uh, the Singularity podcast has become. And over the years, I've had, you know, different comments come my way about the podcast. You know, people telling me how much they like it. Uh, that my voice is very calming to them. Um, the subject matter is usually different or weird. And, um, you know, that idea of putting the music behind my voice and everything. There's, uh, you know, some people have told me that they'll listen to my podcast when they're falling asleep. You know, that it makes them feel calm and at peace and, you know, I guess, you know, to some people it might be considered an insult, right? To have people tell you that they fall asleep to your work, you know? But in my line of business, really, it's kind of a compliment, you know? If I can make something that's like so calming and so chilled out that it makes people like want to relax and, you know, even sleep. Well, you know, it's not such a bad thing now, is it? Especially nowadays with how crazy uh, everything in the world is right now. And I'm not going to talk about that stuff today. Um, And that's not because uh, I was recently banned on social media or something because the subject matter that I shared was too sensitive for some people, which I totally find hilarious. Like... The fact that anybody would even care, uh, you know, that I was talking about COVID or something, you know, is so funny to me. Like, like who cares what I think? But, <laughs> you know, I guess I kind of feel like a little bit like more legitimate now, you know, now that I've been canceled on uh, social media, you know, I, I actually have some worth, I guess. Right. I guess what I'm saying must matter on some level. And uh, like I I say that tongue in cheek, okay? I'm half kidding because really it's just so stupid. The idea of me being censored, you know, can be viewed two different ways, you know? Like one, I'm an artist, right? So, um, you you know, I should be inherently insulted and angered by the fact that, you know, I can no longer be on Twitter or something, you know, but on the other hand, it's kind of like, like I was saying before, it's kind of like an affirmation that, you know, somebody's listening, (laughs) you know, so I'm not too bummed out about it. I do think it's weird. And, uh, you know, I mean, censoring people, like censoring speech and those kinds of things, like you know, especially political opinions or something. It's so silly because anybody who listens to my podcast, at least for any length of time, would know that I'm really kind of not on one side or the other, you know? And I guess that's kind of like 
what I want to talk about in this podcast today, considering that it is the 100th podcast. Okay, so it's a milestone for me as a podcaster and as a creative person, you know, as an artist. A um, hundred is a lot, you know, it's a lot of talking and a lot of subjects and film editing, video editing, you know, text, you know, a lot of audio editing and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I also wanted to talk about this idea, you know, of being a solo artist, you know, uh, the singularity, you know, a single person. Um, it's not a team of people, you know, I don't have people on payroll that edit things for me or whatever, anything and everything you get from pipe choir records that goes from the music, the artwork, the, you know, t-shirts, album covers, podcasts, books, illustrations, anything, anything that I do comes from me. I don't have any partners like that help me out with the creative stuff. Now you, my listeners, you know, okay, that my wife does help me out in some ways, but that's usually with the stuff that's like post production, the things that are not creative, you know, the more technical things like social media and the internet and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I do my share of that, but really that's where my wife steps in. Right. So, you know, it is something to kind of pause for a moment and think about, you know, this idea of being, you know, like a, a lone wolf, you know, a single person, uh, you know, a single artist who's doing different formats, different mediums and everything. And, you know, kind of like, I guess what I would consider to be the importance of that, at least in my life, you know, and it does kind of, in some ways, at least kind of cross over, uh, the idea does anyway, of, you know, being in a environment socially or politically or whatever, where this idea of being an individual is kind of um, being discouraged. You know, there's a lot of talk about group think and having to belong to a group that has an ideology or a belief. And, you know, you're either on this team or that team, you know, and, you know, I'm a libertarian. I'm, I'm somebody who takes the best idea from the left or from the right. It doesn't matter to me what side it comes from, as long as it's like the better idea, at least in my opinion. Right. So I'm neither Democrat or Republican. I'm not red or blue. I'm kind of like right in the middle. I'd listen to both sides, you know, fairly openly. And, you know, sometimes one side makes more sense than the other, you know, but I still remain. OK, I still remain singular. You know, I, I don't belong to a group, okay? And no matter how much arm twisting you do or how much coercion there is or like, you know, fear or threats or whatever, I am going to remain an individual. And, you know, really, as an artist, I can say, you know, having done this for like 50 years, you know, I was encouraged to be an individual you know, by family, friends, and other artists, like my, my peers, you know, being part of the, the group was something that was looked down on, you know, belonging to a group, you know, an ideology, one group of thought or one school of thought, right? Um, so, you know, I find myself here in the year 2021, this crazy year, where a lot of the rhetoric I hear, you know, a lot of the talk is, you know, this group versus that group and vice versa. And here I am in the middle, stuck in the middle with you, right? But that's true, right? That's where I'm at. And I'm proud of that, you know, and this podcast, 
you know, along with all the other stuff that I do. But this podcast in particular is kind of like my opportunity, or at least I see it this way, okay? It's kind of my opportunity to express my singular point of view, okay? Now, some people will poo-poo that. They'll just ignore my opinion, and I, I'm fine with that. You know, I don't care. Um, that's probably why I get so little attention, right? Because there's just not that many people that are dialing into what I have to say, but there are some, okay? And like I've said this whole time, okay, like it doesn't matter to me if there's only one person listening or there's a million people listening. It doesn't matter. Like, as long as there's that one person, it's not just me in an echo chamber, just talking to myself, then I'll be happy to put out podcasts. I'll be happy to take the time and, you know, talk a little bit. And now, you know, three years into the game, you know, a hundred episodes in, you know, what, what have I learned? You know, what have I learned from my experience doing this podcast for as long as I have? And with as little attention as it's gotten, you know, because it's not, you know, I'm not mainstream. I'm not this big popular thing. And I doubt that it will ever become that. I'm not sure that it ever could because the subject matter is, you know, pretty weird or pretty narrow, you know. But um, I've learned over the course of time. Okay, in case you're wondering, right? I mean, we are here, so I'll just say it, but I've learned how to talk into a microphone. And that's something that sounds silly, probably, to most people, but it really isn't. I mean, it's a skill in and of itself. You know, it's something that you learn over time. You know, the do's and don'ts, the things that I prefer for my voice and, you know, what to talk about, what to not talk about, how to say it, you know, having a sense of humor, all those things that I would want to represent in a podcast. You know, I've learned all this stuff. When I first started out, I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, I knew how to put a microphone up. I obviously knew how to read, you know, but, uh, you know, it was only maybe four or five episodes into the Snowflake 33 podcast, the the podcast I had before the Singularity podcast. Uh, It was only about four or five episodes in where I just threw away the script, you know, and um, for better or for worse, you know, and I think it's for the better personally. I think that the idea of talking freely and openly and leaving in all the kind of like blunders and mistakes like the um and the uh and the you knows that I say and the you know you know right you know and uh, I do that all the time but and you know I've had people tell me that are close to me okay family members have told me that I stutter you know and that I should delete that I should get that out of there and I should clean up my podcast I've had you know suggestions like that and you know what I think about it for maybe like two seconds, but it's like, no, 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 no. I don't want it to become, okay, something that's so polished, you know, and so pristine. It's not really like that. We don't talk like that. You know, people don't talk like that. You know, we, we there's mistakes and there's stuttering and da, 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 you know, <laughs> we all do it, right? So... While my peers, you know, my uh, fellow podcasters out there in the world will go through with a fine tooth comb and they edit all the, you know, errors out. And I edit some of my errors out. So let's be clear about that. But for the most part, now when I do a singularity podcast, I approach it really a lot like being a DJ. I put the microphone up. I just start talking and do what I do. You know, whatever comes out, you know, I might make some notes here and there, but for the most part, really, it's me just talking. That's all it is. There's nothing special about it. 
You know, there's nothing magical or it requires no real skill other than, you know, like I said, you know, how to talk into a microphone and, you know, how to maintain kind of like a standard of what I want. And uh, perfect is not what I want, you know? And, you know, what, what do I want? I guess I would say I want it to represent like the better part of me, you know? Um, I said to a friend not too long ago, you know, it's really in some ways it's become kind of interesting to really try to live up to the person that I've become in the podcast, you know, um, not that it's that difficult, but you know, I'm not always upbeat. I'm not always kind. I'm not always patient. I'm not always happy. You know, I'm not always, you know, into talking about strange things or something. I, although I usually am, but, um, do you follow what I'm saying? I think you probably do. Like, there's a certain amount of positivity um, that I hear in my own podcast when I listen to them myself. And I do, uh, you know, occasionally go back and listen to what I've done. And I got to say, I think I've gotten better at it. It's taken me a long time, uh, a lot of trial and error, trying different things and experimenting with different ideas. And some were really stupid. And some wound up really kind of changing this podcast, you know, permanently, forever, you know. And uh, I guess, you know, in the beginning when I started out, it was like it was because I really felt that I had something to say or something I wanted to say. Now, I think it's more about I think there are some people who really kind of want to hear it, you know, th those five or 10 happy innovators out there in the world that are, you know, tuning in to this podcast and tuning into the music I make and kind of starting to dig a little bit into my catalog and, you know, what I have available to the public. Um, actually, somebody left a comment on one of my things not too long ago, and they said something about... Um, like the Mike Bostwick presence online is something they had just discovered, like Pipe Choir and the PC3 thing. And, you know, they had just discovered it and like what a rabbit hole to go down. You know, there's like um, a lot of work that I've put out over the years. And I got to say, I, I forget. Honestly, I do. I forget sometimes, OK, that. I've been doing this for as long as I have, and there's so much music I've made or so many different ideas I've had, whether it's videos or music or, you know, podcasting, whatever it is. There's all these ideas that I've put out that are still floating out there in the ether, you know? And I don't know, I guess, like I said, I forget and I get reminded, you know, and this person was kind of commenting like, they look forward to like digging through all the stuff I've done. And that really, you know, I get comments like that. Right. And it's like, it makes it kind of like worth it. You know, it makes all the stuff that I do worth it because I mean, that is the goal of the artist is to communicate ideas to people. And if you're lucky enough, you get some feedback, you know, you get some kind of compliment or somebody acknowledging that what you did was good and has value to them, you know? Um, speaking of which, I just recently, I think it was yesterday, I got a donation, okay, from somebody, from one of my fans, and oh, it was a substantial amount of cash and kind of surprised a little bit like out of the blue that happens, you know, like even though I'm giving my stuff away for free, like I allow people to use my music or whatever for free, 
every once in a while, you know, I'll get somebody who just takes it upon themselves to send me a donation, you know, and I don't ask for money. You know that, you know, I don't, I never have, and I never will. I don't have a Patreon thing or, you know, I'm not constantly asking for money. I have never asked for money. Um, I do sell things I and mean, I sell records and stuff, but anything I sell is available for free with the exception of t-shirts and stuff. But you know, the music and all that, like everything else is for free and it always will be as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I've decided a long time ago, you know, and I own this stuff. I own the rights to all of it. So it's going to be what I want it to be. And and what I want it to be is free, just like you and just like me. See, that's how songs are written right there. Bam. You know, that's how I want it to be. I want it to be free, just like you and just like me. See, that's that's amazing. I got to write that down. Hang on. <laughs> oh, staring out my window. It's raining like cats and dogs, you know, uh, tropical storms blowing through my area and the trees are just going crazy and I'm just sitting here acting like an idiot. <laughs> just talking, right? Just talking, just shooting the breeze. Maybe that's what I should call the podcast, you know, shooting the breeze, but I don't think so. I'm going to get a sip of my coffee. So hang on one second. And I would suggest, you know, keeping with tradition, if you do have a cup of coffee that you might want to take a sip yourself. And if you don't have a cup of coffee, now might be a good time to run and go get yourself one. And uh, anyway, bottoms up. Uh, I got a to-go coffee today from Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, I think they make the best coffee in the world. I don't know. Dunkin' Donuts, they make the best coffee. Anyway... So, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about what I have planned for this episode, this 100th episode of the Singularity Podcast. So I'm going to kind of break down for you what I had in mind. You know, I, I did take a long time, I know, getting this all together, but I wanted it to be special. You know, um, I knew like in the back of my mind anyway that you know, this podcast would be permanent record. And uh, many years from now, maybe, if hopefully, if I'm lucky enough, I'll look back and I'll listen to it and it will mark the time that I'm in right now. And, and I really, you know, I take it seriously. You know, it's a, a creative endeavor of mine and uh, it's a milestone and I'm proud of it. So it's gonna be something that I put a lot of thought into. and. So what I've decided to do is maybe kind of like stretch out this episode into like maybe three, four or five episodes, okay, or elements, I should say, you know, and um, so what I'm going to do is maybe like devote like a week or a week or two into, you know, releasing and the elements of this podcast in its entirety. And, it, you know, it's not going to be just one, you know, bit of me talking. It's a lot of stuff that I've put together for you to enjoy. Um, you know, not all of it will be, you know, under the Singularity podcast. So... What I have planned is something like this. I'm going to release this podcast that you're just li that you're listening to right now, okay? And then after that, you're just going to have to stay tuned and see what I come up with. But it's going to be a busy week, maybe a little bit longer than a week, and we'll see. You know, we'll see how it goes. But uh, there will be music, there will be video, there will be maybe some interview footage. Um, I know I did have some fans that had asked me to do some kind of visual, you know, video where I'm talking, you know, 
Um, I thought about that a long time because um, I think that's something that I would have wanted if I were listening to somebody's podcast after a while. You know, I would want to see what they looked like and all that kind of stuff. So I took that to heart, kind of thought about it a little bit. So we'll see what I can get together in that department. Um, but some, you know, music, some new video, some new bits of talking, some new interesting creative things. It'll be like a week long extravaganza from Pipe Choir Records, all in celebration of the 100th Singularity Podcast. So, my happy innovators, um, embrace your individuality, you know, reject this idea of groupthink, belonging to a group, be yourself, be an individual, think for yourself, and, you know, don't let outside forces influence your way of thinking and what you believe, you know, and, uh, Man, you know, get a microphone and start doing a podcast, you know, all you happy innovators out there. It's so easy to do. You know, it's so simple. You don't need to know anything. You just have to just get started. You have to decide to do it and just start doing it. You know, I hope that, you know, in years to come, we'll see some of that, you know, some of the happy innovators will say, I used to listen to the Singularity podcast and I started something on my own and blah, 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 blah. Here I am. That would make me so happy, you know, to hear other creatives and other interesting people because, you know, everybody has a story, right? Everybody has a story. Doesn't matter what walk of life they come from. It doesn't matter how much money they have or don't have. You know, everybody has a story behind each person is like an ocean of life and experience. You know, I know I'm repeating myself, but you got to listen like it really does ring true and it makes sense. You know, I mean, think about that, really, if you walk through life treating people as if they all have, you know, an ocean of meaning and experience behind their life. You know, you see the person standing in front of you. You don't see the many, many years of this and that and hungry and starving and feast and famine and money and no money, rags and riches, right? I mean, everybody has a story, sad, happy, discouraging, encouraging. Right. And all you got to do, you know, is just grab a microphone and just start talking. If you talk enough, like I have proven, if you talk enough for a long enough period of time, people will eventually begin to listen. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that. I did that all by myself, you know. I did it on a whim. I did it because it was something I had the idea to do, to try. And I did it and it just worked out. And now I can't imagine my life without the Singularity Podcast. I can't imagine it. So anyway, that's uh, where I'm going to leave it. Stay tuned, my happy innovators. You have a lot of work that I've done coming your way for your entertainment because that is why I'm here is to entertain you. That's the purpose I have in life. You know, Uh, no matter how small that group of people is, uh, an audience of one or one million makes no difference. Uh, It's why I exist. It's why I'm here. It's my sense of purpose is to entertain and to, you know, maybe, you know, maybe get us all thinking a little bit about things, maybe things that we normally don't think about, right? Like, I guess maybe to make us all maybe uh, a little more thoughtful, you know, if not anything else. And, uh, you know, 
enjoy your coffee and enjoy what I have put together for you as a thank you, you know, a week's worth of material and new things for you to check out. And it's going to be exciting. So just keep your ear to the ground and, you know, I'll keep my nose to the grindstone. And I will be talking to you soon, my happy innovators. I'll be having some fun. I hope that you're doing well. I hope you have a great weekend. And, um, you know, with that, my happy innovators, remember, because you got to remember, if you want to keep what you've got, you've got to give it away. Take it easy, everybody, and stay tuned. Great things are coming your way. Peace out. Okay, happy innovators. You know what? I almost forgot. I'm going to drop some music at the end of this podcast here. So let me see. What will I share with you today? Okay, I'm going to share with you today um, an idea that I have. I haven't released this yet to the public, really. This is kind of like a one-off from a project that I was working on a couple months ago. Um, it's a live version of the song, The Argument by Pipe Choir. Um, and I guess it's kind of a long story, but I can break it down for you as quickly as possible. Um, you know, I make music with, uh, PC3 and a lot of that music I make, I use what they call white noise, like the sound of ocean waves crashing or the sound of wind you know these that's white noise that kind of sound and unbeknownst to me at the time like in the beginning when I started to use white noise um, I didn't know or didn't realize that it is something okay that sound is something that appeals to people who have Asperger's disease okay Um, like people who are on the spectrum will benefit for some reason from listening to this music. Okay. Well, you know, I've known that for a long time now, and you can go through my back catalog and find tons of music that have that kind of stuff, that kind of sound. Okay. Um, because I like it too. You know, the, the sound of the ocean makes me feel calm, right? But this idea of white noise is something that I was thinking about, like what other forms of white noise could I come up with? And then it kind of occurred to me that really when you listen to an audience, a large audience, especially like cheering, like in a stadium or, or you know, a massive area, a massive space, that sound is the uh, white noise sound. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting to switch out, you know, the sound of ocean waves or the sound of wind with the sound of an audience? And if you remember, I did a song called Ode to Spirit. It was the second track on the TLMS record, The Last Major Sin. That's the name of that record. Uh, So track number two was Ode to Spirit. And uh, so... I had the idea to put this sound of a cheering audience behind the music. And it was kind of like one of those moments, I guess, where, you know, like with Reese's peanut butter cup, you know, the commercial where the chocolate accidentally gets dropped into the peanut butter. And then this magic combination is, you know, discovered peanut butter with chocolate. Oh, who would have ever thought it would taste so good? Well, that's kind of what this was like for me. Like the sound of the audience behind my music completely changes the energy of the song. It's like, it's strange to listen to. And it was like in a way, okay, like in a way, 
a way for me to live out like that fantasy, you know, of having a large audience. Like, imagine what it would be like if Pipe Choir would have become famous, you know? What if, what if Pipe Choir had become a stadium band or, you know, an arena band, right? Um, this vision, this dream I have in my mind, but like not anywhere near reality or the possibility of being a reality, right? So I get this opportunity to hear what it might sound like, you know, and and get a little bit of the feeling, you know, of like, wow, that's what it could have been, you know, <laughs> like all that could have been, you know, but it didn't happen, you know. So I started to play around more and more with that idea, like grabbing different songs I had and putting the audience behind it, you know, and this idea of making like a fake Okay, a fake live album, you know, like would it be a, would it be good enough or sound good enough to convince people that it might be real or okay or would it be enough for, you know would it be good enough and sound realistic enough for my audience to imagine like what it would be like to be there at the concert? And maybe they would get the same feeling that I get, you know? And yeah, that's a bit of a reach, but you know, that's how my brain works. Like, why not try it? Why not just do the experiment and see what kind of reaction it gets? And, you know, I can't remember too many times, okay, in my musical career where I was as satisfied with an experiment as I was with Ode to Spirit you know, with the live audience behind it. So what I'm going to share with you is a cut from a live concert, you know, recording of Pipe Choir, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, like a live recording of Pipe Choir playing the argument, a song that I like a lot. And um, you'll see if you get the same feeling I get. When I hear that audience and the cheering and the, all that stuff, even though it's virtual, it's fun to use our imagination, isn't it? I think it is. So check it out. Pipe Choir circa 2020 from the forthcoming, you know, live Pipe Choir album. Uh, here is the argument. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Peace out. And like I said, stay tuned all next week. There's going to be all kinds of fun. Trust me, I got some pretty fun ideas that I'm going to share with you. Right? We're going to have a good time. Peace out, everybody.